Cataract surgery is now well established as a refractive surgery. But in an eye in which a refractive surgery is already been done, it poses a different challenge. Without adequate knowledge or expertise, such a surgery can throw up surprises for even the most experienced of a surgeon. Accurate barometry is one of the most important factors deciding the final outcome and patient satisfaction after cataract surgery. Biometry following refractive surgeries like RK and LASIK are not only less accurate but also give post-operative refractive surprise. The common keratorefractive surgeries which pose a challenge for cataract surgery are LASIK, PRK and RK for myopia and again LASIK and PRK for hypermetropia. Sources of errors include keratometric errors, keratometry index errors, formula algorithm errors, and these three errors cause hyperopic error in myopic LASIK and myopic error in hyperopic LASIK. Coming on to individual errors, the error in measuring the radius of curvature is a major source of error. It is due to the fact that most manual keratometers measure at the 3.2 mm zone of the central cornea, which often misses the central flat zone of effective corneal power. Flatter the cornea, larger is the zone the keratometer uses for measurement, causing an even greater error. Radial keratotomy flattens both anterior and posterior corneal surfaces but only in a small central optical zone. The effective optical zone diameter can be significantly smaller than the measurement zone of standard keratometry. Therefore, standard keratometry tends to overestimate the true corneal power. Furthermore, there can be central flattening after cataract surgery due to corneal edema. Most of the fattening effect results over several months. Keratometry actually measures the radius of curvature of anterior corneal surface and gives total corneal power by extrapolating the posterior corneal power using Gullstrand's ratio. If the posterior corneal surface is of 6.8 mm and the anterior corneal curvature is 7.7 .7 mm, then the Gullstrand's ratio is 0.883 or the posterior corneal curvature is 88.3% of anterior corneal surface. Keratometric anterior surface radius of curvature is converted to total corneal power by using standardized refractive index of 1.3375 instead of 1.36. This can be illustrated with an example. When keratometer measures radius of curvature of anterior surface being 7.5 mm, the dioptic reading, that is 45 diopters, is actually the total corneal power, that is anterior and posterior surface. Most of the third generation RL formulae like Hoffer Q, Holiday 1 and SRKT use axial length and corneal power to predict the position of RL postoperatively. But flatter corneas lead to more anterior estimation of ELP and thus underestimation of RL power and postoperative hyperopia after myopic LASIK. So what can be done to overcome these three errors? Accurate keratometry is of utmost importance. Measurement of more central K using IL master or central topography would eliminate most of these errors in laser keratorefractive surgeries and post-RK. In post-RK eyes, in addition to taking into account the small effective optical zone, post-operative hyperopic shift could also be considered. Keratometry index errors can be solved by direct measurement of anterior and posterior corneal curvature separately and calculating the net power of the cornea using OPSCAN or PENTACAM. This can also be used by using various correction factors which would be explained later. This is not an issue in post-RKIs as the relation between anterior and posterior corneal surface is not altered.
This issue is not a problem for Hegis L formula because it uses axial length and preoperative anterior chamber depth to predict the IOL position. Holiday 2 formula also gives reasonably accurate effective lens position. Using RM Berry double K method for SRKT Holiday 1, which use, utilizes ELP calculation by using pre refractive surgery keratometry value or standard 43.5 and post LASIK K for IL power. There are different methods of estimating the true post operative corneal power. These include clinical history method, contact lens method. Meloni's Central K method, Shama's method, and Hagee's method. ASCRS.org also gives an online calculator to calculate the IL power in post refractive surgery eyes. The data to be filled includes pre and post surgery biometric data. IOL with negative spherical aberrations like thickness or axis of IQ would correct spherical aberration induced by myopic LASIK. Refractive multifocal IOLs further reduce contrast sensitivity and are not recommended. Defective multifocals is not preferred as defective ring adds to already multifocal cornea and so are not recommended or as well. In spite best of our efforts, if the final refractive objective remains elusive, plans for an IOL exchange or a secondary piggyback IOL should not be made until at least two months have passed and two refractions are stable at two consecutive visits. In summary, estimation of two keratometry by more than one of the methods whenever possible, using of topo, pentacam, and IOL master to get K close to the true value. Correct for ELP by using Arambari double K method or use Higgy's L or Holiday 2 formula. And keep the patients informed about the possibility of refractive surprise.